All right, guys, welcome to Skinny TV on YouTube once again. Yes, so the game has ended. It is Ghana 1, Kivet 2. And, um, you know, this is my first AFCON that I'm actually covering. And um, first game has to end in a sad, sad way. And Coach Chris Hilton, you know, I asked him why he made those substitutions and a whole lot of stuff. I think we are still not convinced and we are very, very sad as, as Ghanaians. In fact, to concede that second goal, um, well, let's talk about it. Before then, kindly like the video for me. After that, if you are new here, subscribe, put us on post notification, and do all the good stuff on this channel. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comments box. What do you have to say to Coach Chris Hewitt, the players, anyone involved in this, even to myself, you can also fire me in the comments box, you know, because I was so sad asking my question, and I'm still sad now because um, we might just be coming home this time around. So... Let's talk about the Black Stars team. As we all know, um, today the coach started Richard Ofori in post. Right back was um, Dennis Odori Professor. Left back was Gideon Mensah. Two backs or two centre backs were um, Jiku and um, um, Salisu. We also had um, Baba Idrisu starting, Majida Shimeru. Then we had Jordan Ayu on the left. Right was Joseph Pinto. Um, Twenty Semenu was leading the line. And the AM is um, right for the Boa Konek So this is how Ghana we lined up against the convenience and being in the stadium and enjoying the game i think first half we played very 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 poorly and um, we considered in the first half we saw the goal coming because the the, the convenience were very very um you know dangerous anytime they attacked the ghana team and it ended up for them scoring then ghana we have to get the equalizer unfortunately it was later on route um, you know, offside um, from VAR. And second half, we got an equalizer. When the team started finding the mojo, when the team started to play well, started attacking, then Chris Hutton decided to switch everything again and bring on players who are coming to defend. That is where my worry is. And um, as a coach, sometimes, like, people will be looking at you in a different way, but you also have to assess yourself. Like, how do you actually see the game? And what did you want in the game around that time? Bringing on defensive midfielders instead of maintaining the attacking midfielders or even bringing in more. Just look at when Semenyo was trying to pick up, he substituted him a whole lot. I don't want to actually mix everything up, but let me take it this way and let me talk um, you know, one after the other. So goalkeeper Richard Ofori, I think first half he was poor for me. Second half, he was very fantastic. He kept us in the game until the 90 plus when we considered that poor second goal from the Kevadian side. Right back, Dennis Odori, I think he was also quite okay, but most at times he found himself wanting because he was being overloaded with two um, you know, of the attackers on him and he needed support from the right wing back, um, you know, the right winger to also support him. The left back, Gideon Mensah, my goodness, like. This guy will give you one good performance today and the next three games he's going to be a flop, a, give you disaster performance. Like, his everything was off for me. No endurance, poor positioning, poor attacking, like, poor defensively. I didn't see any better thing on him today. And many of us in the press box, we were really complaining because Gideon was just lost concentration. Sometimes giving him a pass, he cannot even, um, you know, control the pass. Not that he's not able to control passes or even just to, to, to actually keep the ball with him. He'll just lose possession loosely. And, you know, and I don't know. I don't know what to tell Gideon Mensah. He's a fine left back, but today he was off, off, off for me. Now, let's talk about the DMs. I think... Um, Papa Idrisu was poor for me as well. He was showing too much of a bossy man in the game. Uh, anytime he was shouting at Joseph Pinto to be drawing back for the ball, meanwhile, we need to attack. He was trying to behave as if he's the boss on the pitch. Papa Idrisu, I think, at a point in time, we needed to substitute him. Maybe the coach felt like it was good to take out Majid Ashmiru and bring on Salis Abdul Samet rather than taking out Papa Idrisu and bring on Samet. And I felt disappointed and also devastated around that time. Now, I wasn't impressed with Baba Idrisu's performance. Majid Ashmeru, I was quite okay. Just that at a certain point in time, he was also losing the ball one or two few occasions. But you can agree because he has not really been consistent for his club side. And Rans for Ibakwan is so far off for me. Off for me, you know. He did war against Namibia. And I think today, Coach Chris Hutton gave him a start. And uh, he could have scored that equalizer for us, but uh, he hit the post and other performances. I didn't feel it from Ransford Ibakwan at all. Jordan Pierre, you, 
an experienced player in this team, one of the most experienced players on the pitch on the day, if not the most. And I think he also didn't really live up to the, you know, bidding for me because uh, we needed him most when we wanted to win more, you know, duels around with the boss. At a certain point in time, he was not also pushing for us. But for him, getting into the box, I respect him for that. He did a lot for us. But I was wasn't really impressed with his performance. Talking of Joseph Pinto, first half he was off for me, even though he got one or two calls for penalty, of which Ghana we were denying all those calls. But he needed to be very good, like you know, pass off the ball in a final third or his final decision has been a little bit questionable. But anytime he gets into the box, you get to know that yeah, Joseph Pinto he's a dangerous winger. And I liked that in the game. And to Salam Semen, your first half, he was bad for me. Second half, he started warming himself into the game, as I said already, and the coach had to take him out. I wasn't happy on that, you know, particular front. Now let's talk about players who came on. Andre, are you the captain? I think um, he doesn't really have that kind of, um, you know, endurance in the game. And I mean, we found him going into a lot of tackles, but making a lot of fouls, even though he showed that he was actually willing to die for the team, willing to do everything, you know, because he's chasing a lot of records and he's also the captain for the team. He was trying to do everything, but things weren't working out at that time because we have lost it already. And... Yes, that is it for me. Now, we also had Osma Bukari who came on to do barely five minutes or four minutes in the game. Um, Menes Noama also showed his glimpses, but not enough to give Ghana anything in this game. Then I think, yes, I should just end here. Let's come to the coach Chris Hutton and the Ghana Football Association and others. Coach Chris Hutton, I asked him, like, does he or is he going to accept that his changes actually made Ghana lose the game? He said, no, he's not going to accept because himself together with the technical team, they think they made the best decision at that particular time. And I was kind of surprised because you could see that Ghana, we were playing so much warm, we, we equalized, we were in the you know front foot and we, we could have gotten something better in the game rather than losing it at the, at the, at the die embers of the game. And we have to blame the coach, he's the boss, he makes the final decision and um, the team campaign for consistently, I think, 10 days with no disturbances from any fan. Even the media have been prevent, you know, prevented from getting close to the Black Stars team. They come out to give us a shambolic performance, a performance that no Ghanaian will be proud of. Like 2021 AFCON, we saw we saw a Western, and this time around we are seeing more, you know, Western. I don't know any word to use, which is, you know, much worse than the word West. I, I don't know. I don't know how to put the words together to describe Chris Hutton's performance so far for the Black Stars team. I think he doesn't listen what he's doing. He thinks he's right, and we're also not getting any results from it. And if he's going to follow this way, we are going to fail, and we are coming home. Um, if they are going to play this way against Egypt, then I'm sorry. We are not going to get anything from the game against Egypt because I didn't see anything today against Kved. And you can't tell me that Egypt, who struggled to secure a draw today, you are going to get something against them because they're also going to go all out, make sure that they get the three maximum points to qualify. And if you lose the next game against Egypt, 22nd, all of us are going to pack our bags and head home. And you will be hearing from me from the studios of Oskani TV because I'm sad. I am very, very sad. I am very, very sad. Ghana Football Association, you have been telling us no generation should get closer to the team. In fact, even if you want to, even if you want to go to the team hotel, it, like, the team has been camped as if, you know, that is a military base, or I don't even know how to describe it. They've keeping the black stars away from the Ghana, you know, the Ghanaian, and they are doing whatever they want. We are not getting any better results, and I think this is where it has to leave us. Ghana losing in a sad way in the first game at the start. Felix Ufe Buani Stadium. I'm sad I've lost my voice and I think um, we just have to go home and sleep and just hope that the team will come out with something better. We just hope because I don't find any hope anywhere. So guys, that's it I have to say on the game. Adios in the comments box. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, put on the bell for more updates here on this channel. This is Kenny TV and of course, we shall meet later.